Joining me now is Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey. And Senator, I, I want to ask you the same question. You know, the Capitol Police are sworn to defend you, to defend your life and protect your safety. When you saw what essentially looked like in advance, they decided, as Malcolm Nance uh, said, to treat it as if it was a big picnic that was coming or a school, high school group, and to essentially make no preparations and accept no federal help. I know that the police um, chief has resigned, but what do you make of that? Well, there was a clear lack of preparedness, and dangerously so. I, I, I've gotten to know a lot of the rank-and-file officers over the seven years I've been in, this, in the Senate, and in private conversations with them, they felt like they were hung out there uh, and unprepared and put, them, put themselves, uh, they, they themselves were put into danger. So this is unfortunate, and it is uh, also gallingly ironic and deeply a tragically, uh, a tragic bit of hypocrisy to see how they prepare for uh, other types of protests on the Capitol grounds. Clearly, as has been said and pointed out, rightfully so, uh, the way we have seen uh, uh, Black Lives Matter protesters around the country being treated um, is starkly, starkly different in the way uh, that the protesters yesterday were treated. And, and our president, his language, uh, there, this did not happen in a vacuum. We know he was one of the inciting forces, but it wasn't just inciting yesterday. Uh, this is a president whose, whose violent language has been a consistent part of his four years, as well as in his days running for this office. He was a man that talked about uh, how he should, we should be treating, his supporters should be treating uh, people uh, that he paid for their bills, their legal bills, if they, if they punched them. He was the man that told right-wing extremist groups like the Proud Boys to stand back and stand by. His language has been leading to this moment, and it is not over. And anyone who thinks those of us who have been calling this out for years now, warning about what would happen, and, and still believe we were overstating the fact uh, and they were just bystanders to this president. That, to me, shows that they contributed to this tragic present that we're here uh, by allowing this president to continue to do these things without taking necessary measures to stop him. I mean, I mean they, these people were flying the treason flag. There, there's some of the American flags there. They had Trump flags, but they also had the treasonous Confederate flag flying inside of our Capitol. Um, you can see them there owning the building. Um, not only the Capitol Police, but the Metropolitan Police, the belatedly arriving Virginia uh, and Maryland Police. Nobody was able to stop them. We also know that Donald Trump refused to call out the National Guard, um, that the Capitol Police rejected federal assistance. It's to the point where even William William Barr, uh, no less, has said that orchestrating a mob to pressure Congress is inexcusable. The president's conduct yesterday was a betrayal of office and supporters. But I want to get a, a, a comment from you on the other betrayers. The other members of the United States Senate, your colleagues, uh, Republican colleagues like Josh Hawley uh, and Rick Scott uh, and um, uh, Ted Cruz, who even after this may mayhem still tried to strip essentially black voters, but 80 million voters overall of their of their vote after this. Do you think they should be expelled? Well, well, these things are connected to what you said about the symbols of white supremacy uh, and the signs of white supremacy to have a Confederate flag inches from where I sit. I sit by the door and outside that door uh, from the pictures, it seems that that was where they were waving the Confederate flag. And and when you when you listen to the arguments that they made, and these are these are men that I work with, I partner on bills with, I listen very carefully, hoping that Ted Cruz would say something to me and the public to some way justify it. But to have him use uh, the Hayes Tilden compromise, which is such an, a historical affront, with the Confederate flag being waved uh, uh, on the floor behind where I sit, and him 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 dredging up a history, a compromise that put in place the destruction of Reconstruction, allowing the unleashing of uh, the greatest period of domestic terrorism. Uh, the, 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 the connection for me was painful to see the terrorism going on today with, with the symbols and signs of white supremacy and the justification uh, uh, for allowing the delusion to persist when it has been proven a fraud time and time again that this election was somehow stolen, for them to fan the flames 
of conspiracy theories and lies and then uses its justification uh, that we should be like those uh, uh, who, who allowed the Hayes Tilden's compromise was just galling yeah. to me, so galling. Yeah. Well, I, I think it also, it, he, he stated the point. Right. I think he stated what it is that he really believes. And that Hayes Tilden compromise, I think, represents uh, clearly his beliefs. That's what he said. Uh, Senator Cory Booker, thank you so much for making some time uh, to be with us tonight. Really appreciate you.